Hey everyone, I am Vismaya. Today, let's know something about gastrointestinal pathology. So, we know that gastrointestinal system consists of oral cavity, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, sigmoid colon, and rect. So, we will be learning about all the systems, all the organs pathology in this gastrointestinal pathology. At first, uh, let us learn about the first organ in this system that is esophagus. It's a hollow tube which connects to the oral cavity and stomach. You should know like like uh, uh, 40 cent. It's 40 centimeter. It has four constrictions, and uh, there are four layers in the esophagus. The basic anatomy and physiology of the esophagus. Now, just moving on to the pathology of the esophagus. When there is any abnormality in the esophagus, the patient complains of heartburn. The patient complains of heartburn. Like they feel that there is some pain in the mediastin. Mediastin. Like you know that esophagus moves, runs in the esoph medial mediastin. So if there is any pathology in the esophagus, they, the patient may complain of esophagus, of a heartburn, and he complains of regurgitation. Like the whatever food he takes, he feels like it's coming back to the mouth, and he may complain of chest pain, dysphagia, nodonophagia. There is difficulty in swallowing solid or liquid foods, global sensation. Like the patient feels there is some mass in his esophagus, he, he complains of that. So at first there are at first we will learn about the congenital anomalies of the esophagus. So it's not so common to be seen like esophagus ab congenital abnormalities are uncommon. If it is there, they are detected as soon as birth like on or bef after, as soon after feeding you will be knowing that there is some abnormality in the esophagus. Examples of congenital anomalies are agenesis. Duplication of esophagus, congenital stenosis, esophageal atresia, tracheoesophageal fistula. These two are important things. We'll be learning about this now. So, what is atresia? There is only developmental incomplete, incomplete esophagus. So, there is incomplete development of the esophagus here also. This thing is called as atresia. So next, it is discovered shortly after birth. Like when you feed the baby, the baby regurgitates. It means that there is some abnormalities. That there may be atresia in the esophagus. And another thing is tracheoesophageal fistula. This is trachea. This is esophagus. So there is. A connection between trachea and esophagus. There is a fistula in between this. So this is called as tracheoesophageal fistula. Clinically, there is paternal hydromenus, polyhydromenus, and the newborn will have abdominal distension, frothing, bubbling, difficult to feed the baby. There may be aspiration pneumonia and there is several fluid and electrolyte imbalance. There is something called as Walter syndrome in which tracheoesophageal fistula is one of the component. It consists of V4 vertebral anomalies, A4 anorectal atresia, T4 tracheoesophageal fistula, R4 renal diseases and radius is absent in such babies. This is known as Walter syndrome. We learned about the congenital anomalies. Next, moving on to esophageal muscular dysfunctions. Like the muscles of the esophagus is not working properly. In what conditions they are seen? Achalasia, hiatus hernia, esophageal diverticula. Achalasia in is a condition in which increased lower esophageal spinter tone is seen. There is impaired relaxation of smooth muscles. Whenever we say that there is achalasia, there are tri triad of 
these things like incomplete lower esophageal relaxation, increased lower esophageal tone, and aperistalsis of esophagus. There may be primary achalasia or secondary achalasia. Primary, there is congenital absence of ganglionic cells. In secondary, due to Chagas disease, due to trypanosoma paratozoa. What, what the patient complains is dysphagia and difficulty in bleaching and chest pain if they have achalasia. How do you screen for achalasia? It's like you do CCK test and the diag diagnostic tests are barium swallow. In the barium swallow, you see a bird beak appearance, bird beak appearance, and you will be looking for the manometry, like it assesses the pressure zone in the esophagus tube. And the second thing in the esophageal abnormalities is a muscular dysfunction is hiatal hernia. The hernia through the hiatus, like esophagus or the stomach, moves above the diaphragm and it may be type three types sliding, sliding, rolling and la. esophageal webs and rings. They are uncommon. If they are seen, they are more in females older than 50 years old. They are associated with gastroesophageal reflux syndrome disease, chronic graft host disease, blistering skin disease. They are accompanied by a syndrome called as Perman Vincent, Lamar Vincent syndrome, which is a chronic iron deficiency. There is leukoplakia, intermittent dysphagia for solid due to webs and strictures. When you say palm Plumber Vincent disease, there is a triad of iron deficiency anemia, esophagus webs, and glossitis due to deficiency. Rings, webs, in rings, if it is above the gastroesophageal junction, it is called A ring. If it is below the esophagus, lower to esophagus, then it is called B rings. The patient often complains of hemiptemesis. This may be due to laceration, esophageal perforation, cancers of Bohier syndrome, varices, esophageal aortic fistula, chemical pills, infections, esophagitis, etc. So mainly we will be learning like what is malaria whale's tears. They are longitudinal mucosal tears near the gastroesophageal junctions. They are mostly due to severe etching or vomiting secondary to acute alcohol intoxication. Now, so, if there is acute alcohol intoxication, you will vomit more, they will retch more. So, there is longitudinal mucosal tear, which are termed as malary whale tears. There may be, there, there are esophageal viruses due to portal hypertension. You know, there's, there are collaterals between the esophageal veins and the pulmonary circulation. So whenever there is sclerosis, whenever there is hypertension in these liver vessels, uh, the collaterals develops. The con they are con there will be congestion of subepithelial and submucosal venous fluxes leading to varices. You can see here that the veins are congested and here the very big vessel is there which is con yeah, congested vessels, congested vessels and moving on to reflex esophagitis it is also called as gast gastroesophageal ref reflex disease there is transient LES lower esophageal spinter tone is decreased or abdominal pressure is increased there is simple hyperemia, intraepithelial esophils, and basal hyperplasia under microscope. Clinical features it is more common in elders like above 40 years. They complain of heartburns, dysphagia, regurgitation of sore, tasting gastric contents, and they complain of nocturnal cough. How do you treat the GRD? Give proton pump inhibitors, antihistaminics. Gold standard for diagnosis of reflex 
age of age at is 24 hour ph study so there is another thing very important thing called as barrett esophagus it is a complication of gerd there is normally the esophageal lining is substituted or like is replaced by intestinal mucosa there is increased risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma in such cases morphologically this is normal gastroesophageal junction if there is barrett esophagus this is how the junction looks like and histological appearance of the gastroesophagus there is the presence of warp blood cells the warp blood cells means that it is like it is intestinal metaplasia the complaints of normal GID symptoms like that is the complaints of heart burn, dysphagia, regurgitation of so tasting gastric content, nocturnal cough. You will never know like how to differentiate between these two. So you will identify these structures through endoscopy and biopsy whether that is GERD or whether that is uh, Barrett esophagus. It may lead into adenocarcinoma tumor so you must be careful in diagnosing like uh, what is that so you can see the dysplasia and the uh, esophagus it's normal and moving on there is there is not a uniform arrangement architectural irregularities are there and esophageal tumors are two types only two mainly two types the tumors means we have a malignant adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma if that is benign leomyoma is more common more mostly seen benign tumor uh, first tumor type is adenocarcinoma whenever there is barrett esophagus there is metaplasia which may turn into dysplasia and which may cause an accumulation of mutations mutations accumulation like there may be mutation in p53 ctk4 2a g egfr cyclin d1 cyclin e there is inverse carcinoma at the beginning so this may further form tumor another type is squamous cell carcinoma it is hermoid it epidermal type of carcinoma in situ lesions squamous dysplasia at first which grows into tumors now this is a difference you seeing in between these two types of tumors this is adenocarcinoma and this is squamous carcinoma often involves the gastric cardia squamous cell can often involve the mid esophagus like esophagus above thing is small cell carcinoma below whatever is seen like mostly what you see is adenocarcinomas and microscopically esophageal adenocarcinoma organized into back to back glands back to back glands squamous cell carcinoma composed of nests of malignant cells that partially recapitulate the organization of squamous epithelium so hope this is all there in the esophageal pathology so that's all thank you